certain areas you can chew more grass, but uh, you kind of have to play it by ear to figure out how thick is the grass in this yard, how thick is the grass in certain sections of the yard. But certain sections have thinner grass, like this area, that corner right there has thinner grass than, say, the center over here does. So I can take out a bigger chunk over in that side. I also intentionally sometimes uh, skip mowing grass in a particular area so I can get a, uh, a smoother turn out of the grass. So like I'll avoid some grass at a particular point just so that the, the curve is more gradual. Like this corner right here is sharp, right? So what I would normally do is come in here and like cut off a chunk like that to make that make that turn more like sweeping turn. really or at least not on this mower there may be other mowers that have crews but not this one See, I'm avoiding grass here because I don't want to cut too much deeper there. Great, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Cutting smoother turns, yep. That's what I'm trying to do here. See, sometimes I'll only use like a quarter of the deck and the engine will start bogging because it's, uh, there's just a crap load of grass right there. It's super thick. So if it's that bad with only like a quarter or a third of the deck, imagine what it would be like if I tried to throw the whole deck at it. But 
We also don't need to get into a deck measuring contest. Hey. Dude, this grass right here is pretty thin. And then it starts thickening up right here. start cutting around these trees real soon man did you say no <laughs> see Cappy knows Happy don't know. So I'm starting to sharpen out that turn again. I think when I get to the tree, I'll be able to make it much more. Uh, much more gradual. Thirty-two. Man, time flew by on this yard. Yeah, I'm only half done in 20 minutes, so I'm not going to make that timer. Pretty confident about that one. I think to hit some of these timers you're going to need more powerful mowers that have, that don't get bogged down as easily.
Cut this whole tree off of the uh, off the root here. Working tomorrow morning too, Talon? I should probably answer that question for you, huh? What time are we playing American Truck Sim? Normal time. Like, six-ish, probably. Central, of course, so, what? Seven your time? Now, tomorrow morning we're playing Satisfactory.
Yeah, we got our, uh, what did we do last weekend? We got all our, uh, our uh, aluminum working. So now we're making a ton of aluminum stuff. Do I have tomorrow mathed out already? As far as like what I'm gonna do, yeah. I'm not building anything tomorrow. Or, or nothing I've got planned, really. I'm gonna go looking for hard drives. Hard drives and slugs, I think. It's my plan tomorrow. But I am starting to try to figure out how nuclear power works. Which is going to be really good. Because we're, that's the next thing we're going to unlock is nuclear power. So I'm going to need to figure out how to deal with that. We may put that off until a couple of upgrade, a couple of unlocks after nuclear power. Um, I did research into it, and you can dispose of nuclear waste, but we need a building that unlocks way later in order to do that. Otherwise, we just have to collect nuclear waste forever, which is. Annoying and dangerous. But like you, you mine uranium and then you enrich the uranium so that you can put it into the nuclear power plant. And it creates generic nuclear waste, just nuclear waste. Uh, and then you have to refine the nuclear waste like four times in four different buildings using four different alternate additives. And eventually you'll make, you can enrich the 
uranium nuclear waste into plutonium pellets and then you enrich the plutonium pellet and you can make plutonium fuel rods and turn around and use plutonium fuel rods in your nuclear plants as well uh, but if you if you use plutonium fuel rods in your nuclear power plants it creates plutonium nuclear waste and there is no way to dispose of plutonium nuclear waste it's just there's you can't do it uh, if I convert uranium nuclear waste into plutonium fuel rods I can throw those plutonium fuel rods into the awesome sink and get a lot of points but every step of the uranium nuclear waste between playing uranium nuclear waste and plutonium fuel rods is also unable to be destroyed. You can't put it in the awesome sink. So we have to convert the uranium nuclear waste like four or five times to make plutonium fuel rods just to put them in the awesome sink so we don't have uh, nuclear waste sitting around our base. And there's a couple of those buildings that we have to unlock. So I think I think we'll probably just put that off until we've unlocked that, because otherwise we'll have to store a bunch of uranium nuclear waste for a while. And that's a pain in the ass. close to this poodle. Do I have a site picked out for the build? No, I don't even know where the nuclear, where the uranium mine, uh, 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 mining locations are. I will base our building location for the nuclear power plants based off of where those mining sites are. We may even just... Because the nuclear power plants are radioactive, we may even decide to put the nuclear power plants, like, over the ocean. And... mine the nu not mine the uranium and ship it to the power plant location. Put them in New Jersey. Take him to Detroit. No! Is it New Jersey where Five Mile Island is, or whatever that that place is?
damage the ground. Oh, is it Three Mile Island? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's Pennsylvania. Oh. I didn't even know there were islands in Pennsylvania. So you're just saying New Jersey because New Jersey. Okay. It's the army. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says the Florida man. Yeah. I guess Florida, if, if New Jersey is the armpit, Florida would be the, uh, like the taint. That seemed pretty accurate. For sure? Okay. I like how people from Florida, like, the average person from Florida is all like, ugh, Florida, gross. And I'm like, good. It's not just us. You went down there for the weather? Ugh. You like hot? And hurricanes? Like, I live in South Texas. I don't live here because I like the weather. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Galveston's nice. It's a nice place. You don't mind me asking, what do you do for a living? That you're interviewing Galveston for it. Crunch. Oh, fucking A, dude. You're a geologist slash coastal scientist. That's fucking awesome. So like, looking into climate change, erosion on the coast and shit like that, probably. Why you're not 100% on a Texas move? 
Why, we got ghosts? Well, I mean, Texas is not that much more different than Florida as far as politics are concerned. <laughs> Unfortunately. That being said, Texas is slowly, uh, slowly converting a uh, Democrat. It's slowly moving Democrat. $13. Uh... Not too bad. Okay. Credible rank one. Nice. Hiring employees. With your company's new reputation, people are applying to work for you. You can view applicants via the button below to learn about their experience level, wage costs, uh, and wage costs. As your reputation continues to grow, more people will apply for positions at your company. Each applicant will have their own wage demands and experience level. The higher the experience of the applicant, the more money and RP they will make per contract. Once hired, you can increase the employee's expertise level uh, through training them. He's a journeyman. He wants to get paid 200 bucks a week. That won't be a problem. I don't want to hire him yet because I don't have room to buy... I don't have money to buy another mower and I don't have room for it either so what we, what we gonna do is we gonna go over here and fix all this up all right let's go back over here that looks like an easy job at kingsbury house $435. Low reputation, but good money. So I'll go out there myself. should be a relatively quick and easy job. And this looks like a yard I've already done. I can't say as I blame you about being concerned about doing that kind of a job here, but... I would certainly encourage it. It would be nice to have more of that being done here. I'm cutting at the wrong height. City planning. Five to six centimeters. Or like drainage stuff.
Yeah. Bummer. Stuff you're qualified for, but not really, not really like your passion work. You could always try do, doing something that's kind of halfway between those two options, which is uh, construction, what is it, construction, environmental planning, or whatever, uh, where it'd be easier to get in, in into one of those positions. There's a lot more of that going on right now. But, like, I do IT work for a construction company. You want to get into consulting? Gotcha. I do IT work for a, for a construction company. I don't work for them, but they, they contract me. And uh, they have a lot of environmental uh, employees that go out to construction sites and instruct them on how to properly do stuff at the site so as to not damage like nearby wetlands or uh, stuff like that and then they go back out there afterwards and they're like this is the damage you did do and this is how we need to fix it and all that kind of stuff and they're real the, the construction company I do IT work is really big into that, so. Wetland mitigation. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not specifically wetlands, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they had a big, um, this construction company had a big pipeline they were putting in, an oil pipeline that was going through, uh, was going through a large ranch in Texas, very famous one, if you're familiar with Texas ranches, and they they had excruciatingly strict environmental rules they had to follow while they were in, like more so than what the state of Texas gives normally. Uh, just because the ranch was like, if you're if you want to build this pipe through our ranch, you're gonna have to a pay us shitloads of money. And B, you're going to have to follow all these rules. And one of the rules was like, this ranch has like private security. And they were like, you're going to build your right of way. And you're going to, you're going to be allowed to be on your right of way. But we're going to be completely honest. If you step off of the right of way and onto the property, we do not allow you to get onto. Our private security is going to arrest you and remove you from the, from the, uh, the place and then you're not going to be able to work here anymore so they were really big on like do not do not leave the right away because it was either pay this ranch like crap loads of money um, so you could go through their land or they were going to have to deviate the pipeline by like five or six hundred miles to go around this ranch. And they were like, well, that's not an option. Like, this ranch could charge us like three or four times the amount they're asking for, and it would still be cheaper than going around. So they were like, yep, we're just going through. That's that's what we're going to do.
That's when I learned how much construction actually costs uh, in certain fields when I was working IT for them and they were complaining that their internet was slow and they wanted to know oh crap they wanted to know what other options they had for internet in that area and they did some research and they were like the only other company is this company but they charge us like a thousand dollars a week for internet and the construction company was all like we'll pay it like, they didn't even ask questions. They are just like, yep, we'll pay it. I don't care. I was like, you're going to pay $1,000 a week for internet? It's just not even any good? It's just better than what you've got? And they're like, yeah. We're losing $12,000 a day. Because I can't get these forms emailed on time. And I was like, you're losing $12,000 a day? And they were like, yeah. $1,000 a week doesn't mean shit. <laughs> okay. Jesus. This is the same company that uh, when I leave for a week every month, that's who I'm going to. I'm going to a bunch of their locations on the other side of the state. Site visit work? Yeah. They pay me to visit like five or six locations within like three or four hours of each other. Uh, once, once every, it used to be once a month, but now it's once every two months. And I'm like, do you have anything you want me to do while I'm there? And they're like, nope. We just want you to show up and, and check in with the employees and make sure there's nothing wrong. Okay, it's going to cost you a lot of money. We don't care. None of our employees from our corporate office want to go. So we're going to subcontract to pay someone else to do it. All right. I mean, sometimes they have specific jobs they want me to do. But generally speaking, it's just go on site, check with the employees that are there and make sure they don't have any problems because they've had problems where employees will will finish their job and then when they're done with their job they complain that IT never fixed any of their problems and IT is like you never told us you had problems and so to help avoid issues like that in the future they were just like I'm just gonna subcontract somebody to go out there every couple of months and check up. Are you having trouble, trouble printing? Here, we just paid this guy thousands of dollars to come out here. Have him help you.
I mean, they're not, they're not paying me thousands of dollars. They're paying my company thousands of dollars. <laughs> Luckily, they've got some construction rules that prevent me from having to do some of the more difficult work. Which is nice. Hey, we need you to go hook up a whole bunch of antennas on this site. Uh, according to your company policy, I cannot stand on a ladder higher than three feet, so... One of your employees is going to have to do that. Oh. Worked on dredges for a while. Oh, really? So, like, people that would go out and dredge uh, canals and stuff to increase the depth. I'm paid to sit here and watch turtles. Yeah, okay. We have a... Uh, we have a really big port. I forgot how big the port is. But we're like the fourth or fifth biggest port, I think. I know we're the biggest port in Texas. And they're constantly... <clears throat> constantly talking about dredging it. To allow larger ships in. We're the third largest port in the U.S. Yeah, so, yeah, dredging our port to allow bigger ships in is constantly something that they're talking about. Houston? No. Corpus. Yeah, no, I'm not in Houston. That's why I was all like, hey, Galveston, great, go for it. If you had said Houston, I would have been all like, ugh, maybe, maybe work in Houston and live in Galveston. Houston isn't technically a port. Houston is... it's Houston. Yeah. Houston's a great city and all. I would not want to live in a city that big. Like, I don't... I don't... I don't care. I'd want to live outside of a city that big. That's when people are like, you should move to Austin. I'm like, I don't want to live in Austin. I would live in Round Rock, which is right outside, or I'd live in San Marcos. But I'm not going to live in Austin.
Shit, I think San Antonio is the second biggest town in, uh, second biggest city in, in Texas now. I think it's Houston, then San Antonio. That being said, have you ever flown into, uh, have you ever flown into the Dallas airport? Oh my god. <laughs> blowing the clippings in the mulch. No, dude. My mower is a mulcher. It's mulching the clippings. Don't worry. Also, what's up, Aaron? Like, I was blown away with how big the Dallas airport was when I got off my plane, went out of the... Uh, I got off the plane, went out of the airport terminal got on a bus, the bus got on a highway, drove like 65 miles an hour for like 15 minutes, got off the highway, and dropped me off at another airport terminal. Uh, and I, at, during that entire time, I never actually left the airport. I was like, I drove 60 miles an hour for 20 minutes on a freeway and I didn't leave the airport? And they were like, yeah, you were here the whole time. I was like, what the fuck? God damn. I think they said the number of employees... I think they said the number of employees at the Dallas International Airport exceeds the number of people who live in Corpus Christi. They have like 350,000 employees. And I was just like, oh my god. Or maybe it's, maybe not the airport has that many employees. Maybe it's just there's 350,000 people that work there. Whether they're an employee of the airport or of an airline or whatever, but... You haven't been to an airport until you've been to Atlanta. Isn't Atlanta like the second biggest airport in the world or something? What kind of mower am I running? Uh, it's It's got a K on it. It's got its own subway system? God damn. Busiest, not biggest. It was the busiest, busiest until 2020. Okay. Is it orange? Nope. No, it's black. Is it black? There's a K on it. It was one of the two lawnmowers you could get at the beginning of the game. Actually, I could just look here, can't I? No, I can't. I guess I'll have to look at the, uh... 
at the end of the job. The subway system's called the plane train. I am not a plane person. I do not enjoy flying. After I flew into Dallas that one time, I was like, now I understand why they serve alcohol at airports. And so people can get drunk and forget that they're on a plane and stop shitting themselves like I was. You flew from Providence to New Orleans twice a month for three years? Bleh. I am I am hands down. Oh, uh, okay, yep. I remember that. You're talking about the BP one, aren't you? Yeah, that was big news around here. Yeah, that hit Galveston real hard. Because Galveston has a lot of fishers, fisher, fishermen, like commercial fishermen. Needless to say, that fucked up their life for a long time. Alright, let's go see what kind of lawnmower I've got. <laughs> People are like, what kind of lawnmower you got? It's got a K. It's a mulching lawnmower, it's got a K on it. And it's black. I, I, I don't know. Oh, the contractors on the job were hiring him? Well, that's good. For, like, cleanup. Or hiring them to, like, boat, boat people out there to the spill. Move these nerds around. <laughs> All right. Well, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, we have a uh, we have a really big um, uh, aquarium in town. The Texas State Aquarium is in my city, and they have a lot of uh, yeah, only two dollars in penalties. A dollar for one flower and a collision. I banged into something, and I don't remember what it was. Still, still don't have the. Uh, the penalty free job yet but we're getting there but yeah our our aquarium has a lot of marine biologists at it that uh, are hanging out uh, night lawnmowers the OFS one that's what mower I've got but they're constantly going out picking up sea turtles and stuff it's great Well, how is my... how's my garage upgrade going? Upgrading. Upgrade time, two days. You were doing that before you moved to the Keys? Yeah. It looks it looks like it's an awesome job. I used to see them all the time on... Uh... God, we used to watch this show on TLC that was... Uh... I want to say it was Texas Game Wardens or something like that. It was Animal Planet. Was it Animal Planet? 
but it was it focused on Texas game wardens and and that kind of stuff. And so you had you had the people like monitoring for hunting licenses and all that kind of stuff. You had the people going out and, and taking people's guns away because they were they were not licensed to own guns or whatever. And then they also did a lot of marine work. So most of it was from the Texas State Aquarium, and there was also some jobs out of Galveston that they were following. Do you find the name of that show? Lone Star Law. Lone Star Law. And then they added North Woods Law, which was... Like, North Woods was like Maine. Yeah, yeah, and it is Animal Planet. It is Animal Planet? Yeah. yeah. North Woods was really cool because we got a lot of... You got a lot. It was Maine and Vermont, New Hampshire, that area. It was really cool. Was Chuck Norris in it? No. This was real life. This wasn't. Uh, this wasn't a fake show. <laughs> it was following following around real life uh, Texas lawmen, game wardens, game wardens and uh, and marine biologists and stuff. It was really cool. I liked it a lot. Well, everybody, I think that is a good stopping point for tonight. 